New developments in the Barcelona terror attack that killed 13 and injured more than 120 people last week. After a massive manhunt, Spanish police confirming they shot and killed the suspected terrorists who drove a van through a crowd in the heart of Barcelona. Authorities say that 22-year-old Yunus Abu, Abu Yaqub was wearing a bomb belt. It appeared to be fake. He was carrying knives when they caught him today in a town about 35 miles west of Barcelona. He's one of 12 terrorists. It was a major terror cell linked to the attacks. None of these terrorists had any prior known link to terror. With me now, American Islamic Forum for Democracy president and host of the Blaze radio podcast, Reform This. He's Dr. Zudi Jasser. Good to see you, doctor. Nice to be with you, Liz. Thank okay, you. Okay, he's now dead. I mean, so these vehicle terror attacks are, there's been 10 of them over the past years, uh, past year. Aaron Cohen, he's a terror expert. He is now saying we should kick out the family of terrorists once and for all, once a family member kills or maims. He's saying that's just what could stop terrorists. They care about nothing else but their families. What do you say? Well, I think certainly the family network of support needs to be apprehended, needs to be uh, uh, held to justice, but just to kick them out if they didn't know anything about it would be unconstitutional and not really the way you fight ideology. Because remember, the reason they're doing these acts of terror, ISIS wants to inspire them, is they want to make the West and the, the lure of liberty and freedom to be no longer attractive to Muslims so that they can then be radicalized and help build the caliphate. I think law enforcement has a problem, Liz, when you have an imam that was in prison for four years for hashish smuggling, comes out, becomes an imam, his name is El Mati, he was killed in the bomb explosion a day before the act in Barcelona. This guy was not being monitored. So when law enforcement is not monitoring a guy who had been in prison, who comes out spewing ideas I'm sure are anti-Semitic, anti-Western, and then has a cell of 12 people that were following him, that is a problem in law enforcement and that they're simply focusing on behavior, vehicular jihad, knives, et cetera, rather than following ideology. That's where we need to be focusing our resources. Yeah, 120 canisters of, uh, bomb, of, of, of a form of gas. I mean, there were, this is going to be a major, major attack. Um, and that basically, those bombs went off. They incinerated themselves and the imam. Um, it could have been even worse, doctor. I mean, ISIS has openly called for vehicles to, be, to, vehicles to be used in terror attacks like in Barcelona. It keeps going on. How do you shut down imams then? Well, we, we shift from focusing on behavior, which is countering violent extremism, to finally focusing on countering violent Islamism. All of these ideas, be it violent or especially the nonviolent ones that are preaching anti-Westernism against, against uh, our foreign policy, that say Muslims are victims, they're trying to suppress speech against Islam, or they call it Islamophobia. All of these groups and imams that are radicalizing and separating our community out need to be under monitor. It's not right now they tell you, the Spanish will tell you that they're monitoring 18,000 who've traveled back and forth. Well, that's too big of a group. Narrow that down into those who are Islamist and their ideology. Well, how do you shut they them down then? But how, do you but shut, how do you shut down an imam then? Well, you don't shut it down. You monitor it so that all of a sudden, if you're monitoring these guys that are under suspicion, you don't shut it down because it's free speech. Otherwise, you can't monitor it. But then if they're starting to gather propane canisters, if they're starting to have certain conversations that speak to committing an act and forming as a cell, then you're able to shut it down. But if they're not monitoring the ideas, the precursor ideas before they become violent, then we're never going to get to them you know, in, in enough time. So it's not about shutting down the speech because then you push them underground. And Liz, every Middle Eastern country has proven, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Qatar, they all prove that when you try to shut them underground and, and shut them down, it actually increases the threat of terror. Thought exercise, what if Antifa showed up protesting an imam or a hate mosque like that? What would happen? <laughs> well, it would be uh, an alignment uh, of the planet and that, uh, you know, the bottom line is, is that, you know, hate speech needs to be spoken against. And these guys don't care about national security. The Antifa folks only want to use partisan politics. The bottom line is they truly cared about fascism. They would be exposing the anti-Semitic imam in Southern California that you and I talked about last week or mm -hmm. the, the anti-American uh, imams that, that speak out against our policy. But they're not about fascism. These guys are about political one-ups. Good to see you, Doctor. We love having you on. Dr. Zudi Jester Thanks. there. Thanks again.